The Origin of Names, Word, and Everything in Between, Volume 2, will be releasing on the 16th of November 2021. Pre order your copy today by searching Word Origins Book into Amazon and clicking on the non sponsored link, or checking wherever books are purchased in your part of the world. I am a huge fan of Marvel Comics and of course the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's a world full of interesting characters and stories that's just always appealed to me and many others it would seem. You don't need me to tell you just how popular Marvel has become. I also really enjoy sometimes stepping away from geography and history and that sort of stuff and looking into names from popular culture. I've done this with the likes of Pokemon, Middle Earth and Harry Potter. The world of Marvel is something I've always really wanted to cover for quite a long time now. There's just a one issue. Their names suck. While Marvel may be good at a lot of things, naming their heroes isn't one of them. I mean they're decent enough but just a little bit to the point. You don't need me to explain why someone with spider powers is called Spider-Man or why someone dressed in the flag of the USA is called Captain America. Sometimes their names can draw more interesting elements such as the X in X-Men possibly relating to Malcolm X and how they basically reinvented the adjective hulking into the name of the Hulk. But by and large their names are pretty silly but superheroes are silly. Suffice to say I thought I was doomed to never really be able to shine a name explained spotlight on Marvel or the MCU. Then their latest film, Eternals arrived in the cinema and so did their names. Yeah, I must admit this was not the video I was intending on bringing you guys today. At the time of writing, I saw the Eternals just last night and even while watching the movie I was thinking to myself, I need to make a video about this. So here we are, not planning out videos long term and kind of just making this all up as I go along has some perks I guess. While I just boasted about being a huge Marvel fan, the Eternals were a group of heroes I was not that familiar with compared to others prior to seeing this film. I knew they were the brainchild of the great Jack Kirby so that was enough for me. While the film is getting pretty mixed reviews I have to say I rather enjoyed it. It definitely was far from perfect but I really enjoyed just how much the film interwove real human history and mythology with the narrative and all of this is perfectly seen in the names of the 10 Eternals featured in the film. In the movie the Eternals are a group of immortal empowered beings sent to earth to help the planet develop but also defending it from creatures known as the Deviants. Well, there's a tad more to it than that, but that's getting into pretty big spoiler territory and you don't really need to know that for the rest of this video. However, there will be some light spoilers in this video for the film, so if you haven't seen it already, go watch it. What you do need to know is that the team has been around for over 7,000 years and have played roles in humanity's development. However, they've also never been fully in the spotlight. This led to the ancient humans of the MCU not fully understanding these people and instead making myths about them, and this is seen in their name. Names. The names of the 10 Eternals in the movie are Circe, Icarus, Kingo, Makali, Fastos, Fina, Gilgamesh, Ajax, Sprite, and Druig. These names may sound a tad familiar, some more than others. These names encapsulate what I enjoyed most about the Eternals, and that was how these beings affected the world and the history of the MCU and left their mark in this world through mythical characters. Yes, these names are also the names of mythical characters from various mythologies from around the world, or at least are somewhat similar to the names of mythical beings, at least in our world anyway. As mentioned, when Jack Kirby created the Eternals, he named them after these mythical beings, but in the world of the MCU, it's actually the other way around. The humans of Marvel's universe named their mythical beings after the Eternals. This is just something I found really cool. I always love it in works of fiction when things that seem as mysterious and myths to us are based on actual events. The Eternals left their mark on ancient human civilizations but never fully revealed themselves, leading to these ancient humans creating myths about them using their names. And as the movie hints towards, it was sometimes the Eternals themselves who helped create these stories. It's not only with their names however that the Eternals inspired these myths. What the Eternals could do inspired the myths about them too. In example, the Eternal of Icarus is capable of flying. When the ancient Greeks saw Icarus flying, they created a myth about another certain flying Icarus. 
Icarus is just the tip of the iceberg, however, though he's probably a good place to start in looking into the history of the Eternals' names, as out of all the Eternals in the movie, his name is probably the one average viewers will most be familiar with. We all know the story of Icarus in the Greek myths, the boy trapped in a tower above the labyrinth with his father. His father crafted wings of feather and wax to fly to freedom, but alas, Icarus infamously flew too close to the sun, causing his wings to melt as he plummeted into the waves below. The parallels between the Eternal of Icarus and the myth he inspired are pretty obvious, though not all of the Eternals and their follow-up myths are as clear to us. The majority of them do come from the Greek myths, however. Take the Eternal of Circe, who serves pretty much as the film's main character, despite being more an ensemble piece. She too inspired the ancient Greeks to make a mythological character about her, that being Circe. Different spelling, but same pronunciation. In fact, Wikipedia informs me that the character was first introduced with the name spelt the same as the mythological character back in 1963, so there's something. In the Greek myths, Circe is a minor goddess and daughter of Helios, the sun god. Her key ability in the myths is being able to transform from humans into animals. This is somewhat reflective of Circe in the movie, who has the ability to change the material of things, e.g. wood to steel or rocks to water. It's easy to see how the ancient Greeks would have seen this woman changing the elements and perceived her as a goddess who could change everything, including humans into animals. The Eternal of Fina lent her name to another Greek myth it would seem. How if the Greeks decided to alter her name, chiefly adding an A to the start of it, for unknown reasons. In in the movie, Fiona is able to conjure up any weapon possible, whether that be swords or shields or spears. She's even referred to in the movie as the goddess of war. This is why she was adapted by the Greeks into their very own goddess of Athena. Athena is definitely one of the most well-known goddesses of the Greek myths. She is their goddess of war and wisdom and she was even birthed from Zeus's skull. It's easy to see how the Greeks saw this woman conjuring up weapons out of thin air and based their own war goddess around her. The Eternals leader is Ajax, and she, yes I know it's a he in the comics, has the ability to heal others. In Greek mythology, Ajax, spelled with an X and not a K, isn't actually a god but a human hero instead, and yes a man, at least in our world anyway. There don't seem to be too many connections between the Eternal of Ajax and the myth of Ajax. In Greek myths, Ajax is a fierce warrior and is seen as being only second to Achilles in terms of fighting and power. There doesn't seem to be too much about him being able to heal others however. Whatever the case, clearly the Greeks of the past saw the Eternal of Ajax as heroic enough to name one of their most beloved heroes after her. This character also seems to be the one changed most from the comics, so maybe some of the similarities between the Eternal Ajax and the mythical Ajax are more apparent in the comics. There are much clearer parallels between the Eternal of Phastos and the mythical Greek figure which he inspired of Hephaestus. Yes, their names aren't exactly the same, but close enough. The Eternal of Phastos has the ability to invent pretty much anything. He is seen as being the one who gave humans great ideas and allowed their technology to advance. The Greek god of Hephaestus is the god of blacksmiths, the forge, as well as other craftsmen like carpenters, sculptors and metal workers. This god kept his hands busy and would have been making all kinds of things, just like Phaestos who inspired the Greeks to create this figure. The Eternal of Makari wouldn't get a mythological figure based on her until the Romans adopted the Greek myths. Her super speed led to the Romans to naming their equivalent of the Greek god of Hermes after her, Mercury. Mercury is god of many things, but is also their messenger, so he had to be rather speedy, hence why Makari's speed inspired the Romans. Mercury has gone on to be the name for a variety of things, including the planet quickest to circle the sun and the metal that is quickest to melt, all ultimately named after this Eternal, at least in the MCU anyway. We're finally able to stray away from the Greek myths with the Eternal of Gilgamesh. In the film, Gilgamesh is the strongest of the Eternals, with cosmic gauntlets that pack a huge punch. Gilgamesh would go on to inspire the mythological figure of the same name from Sumerian mythology, Sumer being a part of ancient Mesopotamia. The Epic of Gilgamesh is one of the most well-known works that come out of Mesopotamia. These epics tell various stories of the man and what he achieved. These poems and epics in the MCU, however, were based on the real antics of the actual Gilgamesh. Also, it's just a really fun name to say. Gilgamesh. 
Another Mesopotamian land is of course Babylon, and it was in the Babylonian mythology that the Eternal of Kingu was made into a mythological character, that being of their mythical figure of Kingu. In the myths, Kingu was a mighty warrior who destroyed other gods before eventually dying himself. However, the human race was then created from his blood. Kingu the Eternal did help create modern human life and was a pretty good fighter, so it's clear how the two got combined. Sprite is an interesting case. This Eternal has a childlike appearance and due to her immortality never ages. Her name didn't inspire one particular mythological character but rather the idea of sprites as a whole. Sprites appear in mythologies all across the globe though mainly in Europe. They're seen as mischievous childlike fairies who pull tricks. The Eternal of Sprite has the power to cast illusions and can use her powers for all kinds of trickery. So it's easy to see how this one tricksy child inspired people into creating the entire concept of Sprite as being tricksy, magical, permanent children. Then we have Druig. The Eternal of Druig is able to control the minds of people. We don't seem to be too sure as to where this name actually came from. My theory however is that it was his name that inspired the Druids. Druids were an ancient Celtic society of people who ranged from teachers to priests. We actually seem to know very little of the Druids as they left no written records themselves. They are however often portrayed as devout followers. This could relate to Druig's mind control abilities as those who he controlled the minds of would have devoutly followed followed his every word. Anyway, I'm very aware this isn't the usual kind of video you'd expect for myself, but after watching this film I just couldn't help but dive into these names, as I just found them so fascinating. I know this film isn't getting the best reviews and I understand why, as a film it has some issues, but there are some real highlights in it, and for me, as someone who has devoted their life to names, one of the biggest highlights has to be the deeper history behind the names of the Eternals. Thank you Jack. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Patron is vital to Name Explain and donating just $2 a month allows you to enjoy ad-free videos and bonus patron exclusive content. It also allows you to help choose what names get explained in upcoming videos and it gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you so much for all the support you guys give Name Explain. Thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and also join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain, both of which will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.